Hello, this is Dr. Jawad. Please subscribe to my channel for more up-to-date videos. And thanks for watching. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. In this short video, I get a lot of questions and I deal with a lot of patients on a daily basis who are really, really stressed out. I mean, stressed out to the max. And the question is always, how do I lower my stress? The thing is, we can't lower the stimulus, but what we can do, we could help change our body's reaction to the stimulus thrown at us. And what it is, is that that's cortisol. Cortisol produced by the adrenal glands, which are corticized glands that sit right on top of the kidneys, Adrenal glands, those are our stress glands, and one of the things they produce is our stress hormone called cortisol. Now, cortisol is actually good for us, okay? So back in the days, it's part of our fight or flight response. When we had to, when we got attacked by the next village and we had to get up and run to, you know, run to the next area where we're going to plot our land, that was good because the stress hormone allows us to do that. However, now in the 21st century, due to stresses, we are stressed out all the time so that cortisol is being produced with the adrenals is being released every single day on a daily basis and there's no downtime. So this is why we're getting stressed out, now we're getting so stressed out. Now cortisol, again, if it's high, okay, you're gonna, it's gonna lead to weight gain, it's gonna lead to puffy face in the form of Addison's disease, you're gonna get anxiety, fatigue because you're gonna be stressed out all the time and also high blood pressure. Now, the flip side is if your cortisol levels are too low, which that's not a good thing either, you're going to get weakness, you'll get fatigue, you'll get low blood pressure, and also too, you get craving salt, okay? So ways, I'm going to talk about ways to lower the cortisol levels naturally, but first, what I always suggest to all my patients, anybody who asks me is, the number one thing you want to do is change your diet. Again, you want to change the diet. You want to get rid of the, the GMO foods. You want to get rid of the high fructose corn syrup, the sodas, the breads, the pastas, the dairy products, the packaged meats. They're loaded with just stuff that's going to not help you with your stress response. So first and foremost, what I always suggest is you want to increase your growth hormone levels naturally. Now, as we age right around 50, our growth hormone levels decrease as we age. But the problem is, the growth hormone is a hormone that helps balance out cortisol. So when we do things, when we, this is why when we exercise, we actually lower our stresses because the main goal is to break up your growth hormone levels. You want to bring this back up so it'll help lower the, the cortisol. Now again, exercise, whether it be walking, whether it be, uh, again, aerobics or like swimming aerobics or working on the gym or CrossFit or you, what you want to do, you want to start up with some type of activity, I always recommend uh, start walking. If you start walking three times a week, 20 minutes first thing in the morning, that is going to help kickstart lowering your cortisol levels naturally. So you want to do anything that's going to increase your growth hormone levels. Two, you want to add vitamin D3 and vitamin B1 and vitamin B5 into the diet. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this. If you live in the coast and if you could be out in the sun for half an hour, get that nice sun exposure of vitamin D, that's great. That's a way to lower, lower, lower cortisol levels naturally. However, I live in the Midwest, so I always recommend to my patients and really everybody is vitamin D3, you want to get a minimal of 10,000 IUs per day. Now, vitamin D3 is a fat-soluble vitamin, so you really want. So you also want to take it with a nice with, with a, a meal that contains some fat. You don't want to take D3 on its own, and you want to take it first thing in the morning. Also, too, B1 and B5. The B vitamins are phenomenal for the nervous system, anyways. But however, B1 and B5 they're predominantly good for helping the adrenals. Now, again, when you when you assist the adrenals, you're going to help balance out the cortisol levels. Next, omega-3 fatty acids. Now, omega-3 fatty acids, where you're looking at the component, the EPA and the DHA. You want to get a minimal amount of 1,000 milligrams of EPA. You want to get a minimal amount of 1,500 milligrams of DHA on a daily basis. EPA is good to over, for overall systemic inflammation, and DHA is good for the brain and the eyes. So you're going to help, if you balance out the inflammation, you're going to lower the cortisol levels naturally. Also, too, you could find a lot of the omegas, three fish uh, fatty acids in fish. Now, again, I always recommend wild caught, 
wild caught fish, wild caught salmon, wild caught um, swordfish, which I like a lot. So you want to go for the wild caught. Next, we have a division of our nervous system called the parasympathetic. Now, the sympathetic, that's, that's fight or flight or freeze, okay? Now we have the parasympathetic, which is rest, digest, and repair. That's going to, you want to do things that stimulate the parasympathetic division of the nervous system. And a couple things that I recommend, again, you want to get to relax, but also too, you want to get potassium. Potassium is phenomenal to help support the parasympathetic division. Now, potassium, you can get it in, again, in foods, we need on the average of 4,700 milligrams per day of potassium. However, if you can't get in the foods, I always recommend going out and buying a potassium supplement and you want to take that throughout the day. You don't want to overdo the potassium because you may have heart troubles because it's phenomenal for lowering blood pressure, but again, you don't want to lower the blood pressure too much. Also do magnesium. Now with magnesium, you want, I always recommend taking magnesium before bedtime, okay? Next is the aptogenic herbs. Now again, the herbs are, it's a good supplement to help balance out the, the cortisol. And there's a couple herbs that I always recommend. One is ashwagandha, next is ginseng, and the other one is rhodiola. Now those three herbs together will help lower the cholesterol naturally because what you really, your goal is for adrenal support. The more you support your adrenals, the, low, the more it's going to help lower the, the uh, cortisol levels and the better you're going to feel. Okay? So just, again, just five different mechanisms to help lower cortisol levels naturally. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much.